Hey, linguist and Egyptologist, welcome back to Doodling with Purpose, the internet's only week-by-week -week guide to learning ancient Egyptian. Let's jump in by looking at our homework from last week, which the first step would be to draw this out and glyph it. In other words, you will doodle with purpose. Oh, see how I plug my own show. All right, now we're going to transliterate it, not worrying about what the words are, but just making sure we translate all of the glyphs into their proper sounds, noting the sound notations, the dots, the slashes, etc., etc. All right, from this shocker, we're going again with ew as the start, meaning somebody did something in the past, I'm trying to keep a uh, you know, very similar verb structure because we're working on vocabulary, not verbs. The next word is to praise, hus, which we learned quite a while ago, very common verb because lots of praising of things. Next, we have the water sign N, which turns praise into praised, past tense. And who did that praising? Well, we have a nice pronoun after that of the horn viper, which hopefully you remember is the pronoun he. Again, I'm using very similar words a lot because, you know, it helps. All right. Next up, the first word on the second line, pa, is sun. We have the pintail duck followed by the determinative of a man sitting. Then again, we have his, the pronoun with, of uh, the horned viper, F, so his son. And what is his son and who is he? Well, we've got a word from last week, which is magician, sa'u. And uh, this could be a magician or the magician based on the context clues of the sentence because there's no articles in ancient Egyptian. So it's probably his son, the magician or a magician. Next, another word from last week, sa which is the word for after or following. And again, you're going to use context clues to figure out which is the best translation. Followed by the verb give or giving. Now we're in the past tense already, so you don't actually have to repeat the pronoun and the water sign. I've put the pronoun there, he, just as a helpful, but you may not see that in Stella or on monuments. Once you've established that you're in the past tense and who's doing things, it's often not repeated. Then we have the word protection, followed by cowshed. So the whole thing in English would read, he praised his son, the magician, after giving him protection of the cowshed, or near the cowshed, of the cowshed. I guess we could have put another uh, preposition in there, but it still reads. I didn't want to make it too complicated. All right, let's move on to this week's glyphs. So one of my favorite glyphs, and I'll explain why in a moment, sk, which is a broom. Now drawing this, is very similar to when you draw the flax, the H. If you haven't uh, mastered or practiced this, definitely go back to one of the several videos I've done on the flax because being able to draw these curved lines is still tricky. You'll notice mine don't always look perfect. It's all about drawing one side first and then the second, and then after that you'll draw the, uh, I guess the broom bristles at the top. The broom's upside down. So uh, you'll draw this at the end. And the reason why I like this glyph is because it's the first glyph in my name, Scott. Scott. That's how I write my name, was S-K, then the vulture A, and then the T. So Scott. All right. So here's some words that use that. We have S and then the broom, and then we have two different determinatives. And this one's actually interesting because you'll notice one of the determinatives is plural with the three strokes. So we have the man with the sword and then the man sitting. And you know that you anytime you have a person at the end, it's always a determinative. And if you have three strokes under a person, it means plural, meaning there's more than one person. And this can also add a W. W is the ancient Egyptian version of having an S at the end, like bird or birds. So apid versus apedu for multiple birds. So we have uh, the S is going to have an echo sound, so you don't need to repeat that. And this is going to translate into military troops, plural. So if you didn't have the three strokes, it would just be a military troop, meaning a soldier. Now, similar to a few weeks ago, we talked about this determinative, which means to, which is used for words like burning or uh, roast, things that have to do with fire or heat. Similarly, when you have the bolt of cloth followed by the broom, so S and then SK, it usually has some kind of military or battle indication, even though it's not a determinative, it's the front of the word. So here we have S, S, K, K, we have a proper W for plural, followed by our determinative of a hand holding a sword, which also has three strokes, reinforcing the plural and reinforcing that W sound. So quite a few echo sounds here where we have single sounds basically bordering on a bilateral sound, so you can cross those off. 
All right, so now we have S, S, K, K with a W. Oh, that last one was battle. I think I wrote it, but I didn't say it. All right, so again, we're dealing with the S, the bolt of cloth with the broom, and a lot of words that start with this, again, all have to do with battling, in this case, perishing. What you might do in battle, what those soldiers might do. So words pronounced the same, but with different determinatives, make a different word. All right, our next glyph in the bilateral funsies is this one, which is SN. Now I know it kind of looks like a water pipe, and while hookahs are very big in Egypt these days, they didn't have them back in ancient Egypt, it's an arrowhead. You're gonna draw it by starting with the base and draw that first, then you'll curve up, making the rest of the, of the uh, base of the arrowhead, and then go with a, uh, the curved lines up, and basically at this point you're just gonna follow it around, adding on the barbs, and then finally the top barb there. You'll cross it over and then come back down. So the arrowhead, S-N, not a water pipe, it's an arrowhead. Okay, with that reinforced, let's look at some words that use this glyph. So here we have sn, followed by the N water, and then t. And if you remember, words that end in T are feminine, and that's reinforced with the female determinative. That's probably one of the worst females I've ever drawn, but it is a female determinative, and this is S-N-T, which means sister. It can also mean wife, and that's because a lot of people in ancient Egyptian married their sisters. If you don't believe me, I have a Lannister I can talk about. So the more common word for wife is muwut, but this can also mean sister, wife, can mean wolf, because, you know, that's what they did. What can I say? All right, now, much as we talked about how son and daughter are very similar words, it's the pintail duck followed by a determinative of a man or a woman, and if it's a woman, it gets the extra T, Similarly, if we remove the T and change the glyph of the woman determinative to a man, suddenly the word sister now becomes brother. This one does not also mean husband, by the way. Husband has a proper word, which is uh, it, I-T. All right, next up we have the cowhide with an arrow through it, S-T, st. I think of it like it got st uck with an arrow. Now see if you could figure out this word just based on the determinative. You can pause it if you need be, all right? So here we have S, T, T, W, and T. So we have lots of echo effects here where we're gonna cross off the double sounds because they're just there to help jog your memory and make hieroglyphics that much easier. This is the word rays, sun rays, like sunlight. So you've got the sun, the ra, and then the rays of light. Maybe that's how you could have figured it out. All right, got another determinative here, a man holding a sword. So we have the bolt of cloth, S, S, T, and then T, which immediately you say, oh, hey, look, more single sounds bordering around a bilateral sound. I know what that means. It means I can remove those sounds. So we get rid of the echo sounds and we're just left with S, T with the man holding the stick. So much easier to read. It just takes up more space because, you know, they might've had more wall. So this is the verb to shoot or to throw. Like if you were going to throw at birds or, you know, hunting or, I guess, a soldier. All right, here's your homework for next week. So follow these glyphs, pause it here, write this down. Don't worry about that scribble-scrabble on the right. That was just a mistake I made. I didn't feel like rewriting the whole thing because I'm lazy, but you shouldn't be lazy. You should doodle with purpose, with full intent. Don't listen to me. All right, thank you so much, as always, for joining me on a Sunday morning or whenever it is you enjoy these videos. Like it, share it. That's the best way to support this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.